he brings over the dog that's in the car with him. Um, so, and then while the officer is giving this man a warning, just a warning, not even giving him a ticket, he's giving him a warning. Sir, you should be more careful in the future if you have a lot of drugs. I mean, in case you had drugs in the trunk, uh, not to get pulled over by a police officer. So while he's just so writing out the um, warning, the other officer's walking around the car with the dog. And, and then the dog alerts. He alerts on the door handle, um, and, he, and the officer says, okay, well, I have an alert. I have probable cause. You know, it's, it's not New Jersey. Under federal law, you don't need to get a warrant. As long as it's a car, it's automatic uh, exigent circumstances. And they search the trunk, and they find pseudofetamine used to make methamphetamine. Um, they find a lot of it, and they arrest the guy. Now, here's the interesting thing. The dog was never trained to find this drug. He was only trained to find marijuana. That was it. So he didn't find any marijuana in the car at all, but they found the drug. If you have a search warrant to go into a home, and you're, you're, you can search for, um, uh, your, your search warrant only allows you to look for, for drugs and the drug-making processes and paraphernalia, et cetera. And you find a severed head. And you see, you know, stash of illegal guns, or you see a TV, you know, that you recognize as being listed as stolen in the, in the, in the area. You stumble upon it during the course of your otherwise legitimate search. You have a right to seize that, okay? Um, because uh, it was discovered where you had a, a legal right to be, a place in the, where you had a legal right to be because you had a warrant to be in there. So once they opened up the trunk to look for, the mar for what the dog, dog had alerted to and they found the other drugs, the court held, you know, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. You discovered it inadvertently while you're looking for marijuana. You found another drug. Granted, the dog didn't alert to that, but nonetheless, that's okay. A few weeks later, while on bail, he's driving down the highway. The very same officer sees him driving down the highway. The very same officer pulls him over again. Uh, and the very same dog alerts, you know, but Mr. Harris learned his lesson. He had no drugs in the car this time. What's interesting is that the drugs they found in the car the first time, the drug had not been, the dog had not been trained to detect. You see, that's the thing that bothers me. The guy's innocent. Yeah. The He's guy, innocent. The dog is trained for marijuana, and they find uh, methamphetamine. Right. Innocent. Okay? Right. Right, so the dog is How the, they the dog is, you know, arguably wrong both times because he was never trained to to sniff the particular drug and not even that classification of drugs. Just he's just a marijuana dog, you know. In between times, he just lays back in his cage and chills, <laughs> you know. And they and they reward him with Cheetos. The Florida Supreme Court uh, disallowed the search, saying, "Look, it, um, you know, dog sniffing is not reliable enough. You know, they're not correct 100 percent of the time, and therefore that's not a." tool for probable cause. But the United States Supreme Court unanimously, meaning all the conservatives and all the liberals and Justice Kennedy in the middle, all agreed you know, you, you're using the wrong test. Yes, that's true. Dogs are not 100% uh, uh, perfect. They're not infallible. But nonetheless, that's not the issue. Probable cause isn't based on 100% certainty. Um, it's based on uh, reasonableness. Would, a, would, it, would the evidence submitted warrant, in, in the old days we used the word man, but warrant a person of reasonable caution in the belief that an offense was being committed. Now, this dog alerted, and they were able to show that the dog had been trained and certified. The defense attorney noted that twice this same dog had alerted to this vehicle, and twice the dog had been wrong. The dog was not trained to alert to anything um, that, uh, as to the drugs that were found, so arguably the dog was wrong twice, and he says, how can you have probable cause when this dog is the reason for the search and this dog was wrong two out of two times? Um, and the court said, well, that, that's, that's not the standard. We're talking about search and seizure law, not canines in particular. And canines are no different than any other search, as I told you from the beginning.